What's up, guys? Got a question for you. Who or what is Satan? Who is that person? Is it a person? I'm going to make the argument that it, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Satan is a, is a person, is a spirit, is an idea, uh, is a figment of, of, of our imagination. I'm going to make the argument that it doesn't matter what version of that is true. What matters is that whatever it is, it's real. And I, I think even non-religious people can agree with that, depending on how you explain it. You know, people say there's evil in the world. A lot, a lot of people would agree there's evil in the world, whether they're religious or not, right? Um, you see horrible things happening to innocent children and most people, 99.999% of people will say, well, that's, that's an evil thing that that child got murdered, raped, whatever. But people are like, well, I don't believe in the devil. I just think that humankind is evil. Okay, that's fine. But humankind is also good. So, you know, you can say the angel sitting on the shoulder and the demon sitting on the shoulder, whatever you want to call it, but you know, I think people get too caught up in the details of um, uh, religion and they're just like, like, they try to pick it apart and they, and they say, well, you know, I, like, I believe in a lot of the concepts in the Bible or, or, or the Quran or, or whatever, you know, that, you know, you should be good, you know, like, like there's a lot of good ideas in it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself. Like, I can get on board with that. What I can't get on board with is that people are going to hell and and some people are going to heaven and only the chosen people are going to heaven and you're supposed to believe in this in order to go to heaven and if you don't, you go to hell. Like, I, trust me, I get that. That's something I've struggled with all my life and I continue to struggle with it. But um, what I would say is that the Bible specifically is a very illustrative uh, set of books. And... A lot of people bash Christianity without even reading the words of Jesus, which I think is funny because um, can you really know what the hell you're talking about if you don't read it? Like, like you can say whatever you want about Islam, but read the Quran and, 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 and figure it out for yourself. And then if you read the Quran and you're like, wow, you know what? Islam actually isn't too bad. It's the Muslims that I have a problem with. It's their stupid interpretations and the way they act and their culture and blah, 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 you know, blowing up shit and doing whatever wiping their ass with their bare hand, whatever the fuck they do, throwing their shoes at people. Um, but we we like to use, we like to discredit things without actually researching them. Uh, and the easy way, because that's the easy way out, right? So you like to discredit things by saying, well, well, it's easy for me to not believe in Christianity because look at all the Christians, look at the way they act. It's easy for me to not believe in Judaism because look at how arrogant the Jews are. It's easy for me not to believe in Islam because look at how crazy and, and violent the Muslims are. And there, there is a big, there's a big, uh, there, there's a lot to that argument. There's a lot to it. And you can just say in uh, religion in general, like I don't believe in organized religion in general because look at people that participate in organized religion. But again, I think you're still painting broad strokes because there are a lot of good Christians, there are a lot of good Jews, there are a lot of good Muslims out there. But you're pretty much referring to the dudes that make the news, right? You're you're referring to the Muslims that fly planes into buildings. You're referring to the Jews that, whatever, spit on people because they you're not the chosen ones, I spit on you. <laughs> Or, um, you know, the Christians who uh, handle rattlesnakes or, or um, steal your money on a radio show or whatever they do. Pretend to heal people when they really don't. All that kind of shit. Um, <clears throat> so, um, but going back to who Satan is and what's, or so, what, what Satan is and all that. When you read the words of Jesus... Um, he liked to tell parables, stories, illustrative stories. You know, he would sit down and he would say, I'm going to tell you a parable. So, so right off the bat, he'd say, I'm going to tell you something that didn't actually happen, but it's going to illustrate a point, like a fable. 
there once was a man who blah, 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 did this. And then, you know, and like, that's almost all he says in the Bible. That's almost all Jesus does is tell parables, stories, fables, because he's trying to get people to understand something about the nature of the universe, the nature of um, good versus evil, the nature of heaven, the nature of hell, the nature of God, the nature of whatever. It's, it's something to illustrate the way that God looks at us and the way that we should look at God and all that stuff. And so, um, <coughs> I'm fully willing to concede the point that, that the devil is not a real spiritual person or spiritual being or whatever, that the devil just represents, the devil, in my opinion, can represent your laziness. You know, like you have all this work to do. You're just like, oh shit, man, I'm just going to procrastinate and put it off and not study for my test or not spend time with my kids or not, not tell my wife what she needs to hear or not do this or not do that because it's just too much to think about and it's just too hard and it's too, you know, it's like, it's, it, it's too overwhelming to think about. So I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to do any of it because I don't know where to start. Well, do does it really matter if there's a if there's a demonic force that's like whispering in your ear and actually telling you don't worry about it just don't do anything and like telling you or smoke that crack or what does it really matter if there's actually a spiritual demonic force doing that or if it's just you being a lazy ass does it does it really matter which way that works it still is something that you struggle with right if you struggle with that kind of a thing if you struggle with drug addiction that's your demon. If you struggle with laziness, that's your demon. If you struggle with cheating on your spouse, that's your demon. If you struggle with greed or whatever, you know, or you, you'll obviously have several demons. Like it won't just be one of those. It'll be, you know, more than one of those. But I, I don't think we should get caught up in what to call that or how to exactly to define that. Like if it's, if it's the devil or if it's just our, the dark side of who we are. It still needs to be conquered, right? Either way, doesn't it need to be conquered in order for you to be happy and successful and for you to raise successful, happy children? Don't you still need to get over all your hangups and all your problems, no matter what you call them? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm getting to a point in my life where I'm, I'm just saying it doesn't fucking matter doesn't fucking matter who like I hate labels I hate them I hate labels labels simplify everything and they're easy to pick apart right like if you call me a white guy I bet you you can take blood samples and look in all my DNA and find some type of a Hispanic or black or something else maybe even like uh I think they say that most white people have um like 2% uh, uh, Neanderthal um, DNA in us. And the only people on the earth who don't have any Neanderthal DNA in them at all are 100% African people who just came from the Cro-Magnon line and they only breeded with other pure Africans uh, because that's where the separation took place, like like the Cro-Magnon and the, and, and the Neanderthal um, uh and so those, there are some people on this planet that don't have any um, Neanderthal in them, but very, very few. You know, mo most people now, I mean, you, you know, you look at these um, college sports players and these professional sports players and like, you're just like, what race is that guy? I have no idea what that guy is. Like, it, and it's because he's like quarter Hispanic, quarter white, quarter black, quarter Asian. <laughs> like, like, we're like, so what do you call that guy? What do you call him? You call him black? No, you just call him a fucking human being, you know, um, or a male, at least call him a male because he's got a cock and balls. Um, but, uh, you know, I talk to people who are just like, you know, the devil is the devil's trying to the devil's trying to divide us and the devil's trying to make all all men into, you know, pansy women and blah, blah, blah. Or you could just say the matrix is doing it, or you could just say society is heading in that direction, or you could say it's the liberals' fault, or you could say that it's, you know, it's just the it's the pussification, it's it's the it's the pussy deep in, deep inside of all of us. Everybody has a little bit of pussy in them, right? Everybody's a little bit afraid of things that they probably shouldn't be afraid of, right? You get these guys that you know they they can get in fight after fight after fight after fight after fight, and they're not afraid of any guy, but they're afraid of heights.
or they're afraid of spiders or they have some irrational fear. Everybody has some type of stupid irrational fear. Um, and, 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 you know, it seems like this woke gender neutral non-binary movement is kind of capitalizing on, on the pussy, the pussy that is deep within all of us, you know, everybody who's like afraid, oh, I don't want to be called a bigot. So I'm just going to go along with the, the, the program and I'm going to drink Bud Light and I'm going to shop at Target and I'm going to, and I'm going to, if a, if a girl uh, wants to be called him, I'm going to call her him or he or whatever, because I don't want to rock the boat. You know, there's just a lot of, um, I don't want to rock the boat um, shit happening. Um, and I don't, you know, again, I don't care what you call it. I don't care. Who cares if you call it the devil? Who cares? Who cares if you call it that? Who cares if you call it liberalism as a mental disorder? Who cares, who cares if you call it, you know, um, you know, uh, a lower level of consciousness or a conspiracy, like a, like a global conspiracy? Like, can it be all those things at the same time? Like, it is what it is. It's just, it's, it's evil and it's, and it's something that, you know, we need to resist. Um, and, uh, we need to be, we need to become self-aware. We need to understand what's happening in, in society. So, um, I was, I was talking to a manager at work and we were talking about the show, The Office, and we were talking about Michael. I hope there's people watching this video who would like to watch The Office so I don't have to explain who Michael is and how he acts and all that stuff. But if you're familiar with Michael from The Office, Michael Scott, you know, he, he, he's a very... Like he's, he's kind of like, in a lot of ways, he's the typical American male, but he's a very extreme version of that, right? He's super selfish. Uh, he has no self-awareness in certain areas of his life. Just He just does whatever the fuck he wants to do, like out of total selfish concern in some areas. But then when he gets around women, he's just like super like ultra self-aware. Like he's like too self-aware. He lacks confidence. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he can't separate work relationships from friend relationships. He wants to be everybody's friend, you know, he, because he doesn't have enough friends. So, um, you know, the way that he manages people is just like totally irrational and wrong um, because, uh, because he's all fucked up inside. And I think that the reason why everybody thinks Michael is funny is because everybody sees a little bit of themselves in Michael. Everybody's like, eh, I can understand the temptation to act like that. And the, and the problem is that if that show would have came out like a hundred years ago, everybody would be like, this, this isn't funny. Like this guy's just a tragic piece of shit because the average man could not identify at all with Michael. But unfortunately nowadays, especially in America or just really in the West, most European countries, a lot of people can be like, okay, I understand Michael Scott. I understand why he's such a pussy because I was raised in an environment similar to that, where I can see how acting like that, you might think that that would solve your problems is to, you know, act like a pussy all the time and act like a selfish piece of shit who, you know, um, who's self-conscious about every tiny little thing and, and who has to prove himself, constantly has to prove his manhood, constantly, constantly has to prove his manhood, constantly, 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 constantly. Um, it's funny because it's true today. And, and, um, Michael Scott is like the, the typical unfortunate, unfortunately, like the typical American male, but to the extreme. Um, and it just kind of shows you where our, our culture is going. And if you're religious, you say, well, that's what the devil wants to do to the world. That's what that's, or if you're just like a realist or you're like a non-religious person, you're really like, yeah, unfortunately that's the direction that society is going in. But regardless of, what you think the actual source of the problem is, you understand the problem, you recognize the problem, and you and you might say, well, we need to deal with the problem. Like, we need to become aware of the problem, and we need to resist the forces behind the problem. Whatever those forces are, just resist them, right? So, um, anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I hope everybody has a good rest of their week, and talk to you later.